Thank you, Donna. Thank you, and good morning, all. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, what a wonderful morning already we're having. Uh, we have gotten the victory. Thank you, Marcia, for that testimony. Out to God be the awesome glory. I don't know about you, but when you hear a testimony of deliverance, a testimony of rescue, when you know, when God uh, uh, triumphs and puts the enemy to flight, I tell you that is a more than reason to give him a praise. More reason to give him yes. praise. Yes, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> and um, the funny thing about it is, Marcy called me to share with me what was happening, but it's like God didn't want me to know exactly what was going on because my phone keep cutting off. And I was in a noisy uh, place, but you know what? It's, you just pray from your heart. And you'll just pray the power of God to intervene on whatever situation is going on, that he will triumph over every situation and that she'll come out on top. And she must just share that she was like the devil was like pouring it on pouring it on pouring it on pouring it on yeah but god hallelujah but god but i love that scripture but god amen who was full of mercy and compassion but with such love he loved us he but god we just want those but gods to come in and to triumph over every situation. I know we are all going through challenges, we are all going through situations, but if God can do it for Marcy, let me tell you the same prayer that went up that morning for Marcy was going up for every individual. The last two days we've had opportunity to lift up each other and uh, to really storm heaven. And I'm telling you, expect, a turnaround in your situation. The same God back then is the same God right now. And he is, uh, he is working it out for every single person. And I'm just, I'm just glorifying God because our God has triumphed again. And he will always triumph. The enemy will try to come in like a flood. But you know what? The spirit of God will lift up a standard against the enemy. And I just, oh, thank, yes. I just thank God that, you know, that God just lift, will lift us up out, out of that situation, lift us up out of that, that, that pit that the enemy set trap for oh, us. Oh, yes. <laughs> when the enemy set trap for us, he better set one for himself. Because yes. Because he's going to fall in it, I'm telling wow. you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Amen. So glory wow. to God. I'm just so excited when I hear victory. I'm just so blessed. And I just know it's the prayer of the saints. Just like how we heard that Peter was in prison and the church, corporate body, they prayed for him, prayed fervently for Peter to be released. And even when Peter was at the gate, they, they were like, no, it can't be. But they were praying fervently, but God had already answered. And uh, sometimes we, uh, we're praying, but we're not expecting our miracle to happen. But expect, as you've stormed heaven, you know there's going to be a breakthrough. So just expect that, you know, your, our prayers are not in vain. Our prayers are, are fervent. It, 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 I can just see that enemy um, is just like, you know, it's really, really angry right now. And he's terrified because we know our authority. And once you know your authority, you will take authority over every plan and every scheme of the enemy. So I know the devil's kicking up um, um, some, some dirt right now because he's, uh, he's having to uh, run with, with his tail between his legs. But you know what? God has uh, has got the victory. I just want us to just unmute. I don't know about you. I just want to praise him. I just want to shout. I just want to give God glory and just celebrate the victory of the Lord. So if you are able to unmute, I want us to just lift up a praise this morning. This is a victory. This is Hallelujah. a victory. Yes, this is uh, this is Lord. where God, God has Hallelujah. done it again. 
Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. You are victorious, Lord. Yes, you are. Thank you for your mercy. Father, you will do it as again. Lord, forever, Father again, God. yes. Father, we love and you so again. much. We praise you, you and we Father. celebrate you. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You are worthy of all. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Yes, we Lord. praise you. We worship you, Lord. you, Father, Lord. We oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes Lord. Glory to God. Yesterday, he played that song that we ought to praise him in advance. And we're going to praise him in advance. There's still some more things to that we want to see manifested. And we're going to keep praising him until it manifests. And it will manifest in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, ah, that's my God, my God, my God, my God. I'm so excited. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So excited about my God, my God. No, no, who can stand against him? No, no thing. No, no one. <laughs> no, That's no. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, wow, wow. My spirit is just exploding right now. You know, because uh, there's going to be more breakthroughs like that i'm telling you there's gonna be more 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 that's gonna go bam 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 you're just gonna hear of them and uh, god's done it and again and uh it's just awesome 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 god we serve a mighty god oh my gosh nothing can withstand nothing can nothing nothing greater nobody greater nobody greater than our god nobody greater hallelujah you know, this morning, I don't know about you, but I, I'm just expecting some more miracles. I'm just looking for a miracle. Every day I'm looking for it now. I'm searching for miracles. You know, I have to walk in the miraculous. That's what we have to decide, that we're going to walk in the supernatural and we're going to walk in the miraculous. And then we see miracles every day, every day of our life. It'll be normal. I love where Sid Roth comes on and he, he has this program called um, It's Supernatural. And he said, it's supernatural where the super is so natural to us. You know, and I love that where it's natural. And I just want it to be natural for us. It'd be a, like an everyday occurrence. So we thank God. Hallelujah. Uh, you can tell I'm excited. <laughs> anyway, glory to God. I'm just going to ask uh, Junior to uh, really just minister to us uh, in, 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 uh, in, in worship. And then we're going to invite our speaker, who is Mikhail. And uh, um, I will introduce him later on. But he is waiting and ready in the wings. <laughs> but we give God glory for him, for his life. We are excited for his life and what God's doing in, in his life. And um, again, another victory. This is one that the devil thought he had. He thought he had him flattened and, you know, got him a knock and KO, knock out. But, you know, God said, not so. Not this one. No, he will rise again. Though you may fall, you will rise again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ask for a better welcome than that. I feel like the president. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah, um, I thank God. You know, it's a new day. Um, the sun's not quite shining yet, but um, he's shining in our hearts, you know. So I thank God that, um, I've, you know, I've been having this opportunity to even share. And um, it's been a very long time. It's been over a year or so. I think I can't remember when the last time I shared. Um, I'm a bit closer to your microphone. We can't hear you very well. Me? Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I shared. It's been a very long time, but I thank God that he's he's given me the grace to be able to share this morning and um I was asking God as I do before um uh, what should I share you know what should I speak about you know and God has a way of um of of um kind of pointing you in the right direction but not giving you the full thing um so that's what he did with me 
as he's done every other time. And um, he gave me certain words like, hold fast, he said, um, come back to me. Um, he said, um, be humble, devote yourself. Two different words. And then um, but I landed eventually this morning and um, it's like a plane and the plane takes off and uh, you don't quite, obviously you know the destination of the plane, but you don't quite know when it's going to land. Um, it landed this morning and I landed on faith and humility. So um, it's been taken from James chapter one. That's what we're going to be. And, um, and also um, we're going to touch base in Thessalonians as well. But let's start with James. So James chapter one, verse two to 12. Um, and it says, uh, they say James is uh, he's, uh, uh, the half brother of Jesus, if anyone doesn't know. Um, and uh, basically, he was talking about um, the faith, faith about work is dead. So he, he's, he speaks a lot about faith and the value um, of having faith and professing your faith through action, through, you know, doing, some, doing something. Um, so, yeah, this was really important to me when, when it kind of went, I touched base on it this morning. I was like, Lord, why, why do you want me to speak about this? So it says, my brethren, count it all joy um, when, you, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, which is complete, wanting nothing. Um, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Um, a double-minded man is unstable in his ways. And it says, let a brother of low degree, uh, which is low, um, that he is exalted, and the rich, that he is low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen from a burning heat, but withereth the grass, and the flower of that they were full of in the grace of the fashion of, of it perishing. So it shall be the rich man that fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to him to love him. Let no man say that he is tempted. I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted to be evil. Neither tempted be a man. Amen. Jesus. Mikel, can you speak up a bit? Because we're we're having trouble to, to hear you. Oh, so, um, yeah, that better, yeah. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This it represents the trials of life. This whole this whole between two and twelve represents the trials of life. Now, I've been going through a lot of trials lately. Um, obviously, I gave my testimony I think two days ago or something like that, and I was, I was asking God, expected for certain things to come through, and it took so long to come through. But God works in His own time. So this scripture stood out to me um, as it speaks about the trials and tribulations and the temptations. But knowing this, that the trialing of your faith work is patience. So you have to be patient in waiting on God. Um, so it speaks about the trials we face, but most importantly, the outcome of that trial. So that's what this scripture is talking about. It's important that we go through that trial then, so that our faith is proven in, in God. So verse two introduces us to counting it all joy. So we must be joyful. We must be happy about it. So we should be welcoming, welcoming it, that trial. Even though at the time you don't feel like, you know, you want the trial to happen. The testings can be of the world, directly from the world. So things that, you, you know, you're combating in the world um, itself. Um, from Satan directly and from God, but although they may seem negative during the experience of having to endure it, they are all um, to be accepted with great joy, not because of the trial, but because of the, of the positive work God can accomplish through the testing of the trial. So um, temptations and trying, so temptations and trying, verse two and three, 
Um, it could be known as having the same meaning. However, um, if it's true, then the trial would make us mature spiritually. So through every trial and temptation we have, there's a testing, but during that testing, it enables us to be mature, to for, for full, the fullness of the maturity to come out at the end of that test. But it's not the case, but, it's, but what it is, is that um, it has the opposite effect oftentimes when um, that we can we can kind of be bitter about it because when we're going through it, it's like look why are we going through this but just take it away from me i don't want this so we're asking god to take it away but god wants us to endure in it so this is what it is and um whilst going through it one has to rely on the faith of god the faith in god that they have in god and trust the result whether it be a good one or whether it be something that you weren't expecting but there's always something to learn from the test or the trial that you went through. Amen. Trying um, in Greek is called dokimonio. So that's what it is in Greek. Um, translated as approving. We need not to focus on the trial itself, but the victory in overcoming it. And we obviously we overcome the, uh, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. That's why it's important to share your testimony with people and your fellow brethren so that it's, it encourages and it shows the victory of God and um, it brings spiritual growth and maturity when we overcome as believers to have a testimony you must have gone through a test let us enjoy our tests and trials and welcome them despite the feelings and emotions we feel at the time patience is key being trialed and tested, our natural response is to flee in opposite direction, as I said before. However, God wants to use our troubled times to mature us. Wisdom, verse 5, is, is to know how to deal in the testing times. It's important, to, it's important in order to know how to endure it. So we should be asking God, Lord, how do I get through this? This testing time in my life, whatever it may be, whether it be a bill, whether it be a family member that's gone, or whether it be whatever it may be, we need to ask the, ask the Lord, how do we deal with it? Because he has the answer. Not try to do it on our own, in our own strength, because this is what mostly sometimes we, we try to do things in our own strength, but we can't do it. So we should be asking God during the trial, the reason behind it, and also how to overcome it and the lessons that we need to learn during uh, and after the trial. Um, verse 12 says enduring. So that's lasting for a period of time. That's what the word enduring means, lasting for a period of time. Trials should be not looked at as a curse from God. This is very important. We shouldn't be thinking about, oh, going through this and God is cursing me. It's not, it's not what God's doing. He wants to see how you endure through the trial, what you're going to do. Um, and it's a means that God can bless you uh, through that, after that trial. So basically, you endure the trial and God is glorified. You receive a blessing because you've endured the trial by your faith. So when we endure the trial, we have victory over it. And so it belong, as, as, so it brings God blessing to us and we should therefore not be looking to escape but endure god desires maturity in the situation rather than running from it and how does he promise to provide and he also says he also provides a way of escape so we're not to run from it but if it becomes too much for us in first corinthians 10 13 he says he provides a way of escape so in Ro um so it says here um, they have no temptation overtaking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So he won't give you more than you can bear. God knows how much is enough. Amen. Verse 5 three to five says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. 
this was written by um, Paul, you know, to the Roman church. So it says here, we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, patience. Perseverance is like patience. You, ha you have to endure. Through persevering, you endure. And you have the patience. And it says experience, and experience brings hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. First Peter 6 to 7 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are distressed through the manifold temptation, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, Though it be tested with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. So we're always going to have earthly trials. That's just how it is. But as long as we're going to be on this earth, we're going to have earthly trials. We can't escape it until obviously we, we're gone. Um, but the earthly trials and temptations we face are temporary. So it's important to know that they don't last forever and they're seasonal. So temporary and seasonal are the um are what happens when it comes to the trials and temptations but they do not last forever and where it says manifold temptations it means various manifold is various it means diverse temptations different ones that come at us at different times and they they um they will have different um, levels of complexity to these trials but what it is is that when we have true faith in god we know with a surety that we will not fail. Through God, everything is possible to them that believe. And it says here, through God, it's constantly in the process of refining our faith, just like how gold is refined. So you see how they refine gold in the factory, in the refinery? This is how our faith is being refined every day. So the Amen. trial that comes, the trial that comes, comes to test us. But what it is, every time that trial, every time uh, the trial comes to test us, God refines us. God refines Amen. us. Amen. Refines us. That's Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you're going through, just remember that analogy I just said. God will refine you through your trial. He will refine you through your trial, just like gold. Now, another part, as I said to you earlier today, when I landed, I landed on James, but also landed on. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 to 18. And that talks about praying continuously, unceasing, persistent in prayer. So you may not get your answer straight away, but you persist. You continue praying, you keep asking God. So we're going to read it. And wait, bear with me. So it says, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's what it says. So pray, praying is often, when we pray, it, may, it helps us to worry less or not worry at all. Or we shouldn't be worrying anyway. Amen. So prayer eliminates worry. It eliminates yes. It eliminates anxiety. Yes. Helps build a relationship with God. Yes. When we're, when we're praying, we have communication with him. It's like the language that God likes to hear from us, whether it be the heavenly language or whether it be in, you know, the language that you speak. What, what's most important is that you're communicating with God. That's the most important thing. Um, Jesus says, when you pray, so it's an expectation. There's an expectation that he says, when you pray, so, uh, and that's um, in Matthew. So it says, praying is like breathing. Just as you breathe, as easy as it is you breathe, that's how you should be praying. You should be doing this constantly. Amen. So consistently and ceasing, and not unceasing. To be effective in prayer, remember who you're speaking to. So you have to be direct in prayer. 
Um, it's very important. Speaking to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior means you have direct access to the Father. We no longer need to go to a priest. We go directly to Jesus, who is our high priest. And we come boldly before the throne of grace, as it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. God wants us to commune and talk with him, and you can therefore pray with confidence, knowing he hears you. James 2, 23 says, Abraham was a friend of God. Why was Abraham a friend of God? Because he spoke with God. He was talking to God. So he knew him. God does not care about the length of your prayer. It's not important to him. Or whether it sounds nice, or but only cares about the heart. Pray from the heart, your expressed desire. Desire and the cares, and he says, so he wants you to know from you, hear from you. Uh, we should pray with reverence. Reverence is godly fear. Not like how you, you know, if you fear somebody, but it's like having like a fear of fear in God, respect, reverential, and honor to God, coming humbly and boldly to make your request known. The Philippines 4, chapter 6, so, uh, for, Philippines 4, 6 so says, be anxious for nothing, make your request known. With prayer supplication, thanksgiving, make your request known. So, um, I also um, came across, I wanted to know what the word devotion meant, because obviously we do devotions every day. And, um, and it's very interesting what I found. Devotion is an act of taking a vow. I don't know if anyone knew that, but it's an act of taking a vow. Right. Um, it also means love, loyalty, or enthusiasm. So every time we come on the platform, we show love to, our fellow, to one another, love to the Lord because we're here, loyalty, we're loyal to God because we come, we give him our first fruits, this is our first fruits in the morning, so we're loyal, um, and it's an activity, of course, we're all together in one place. Um, it's also part of worship, observance, prayer, and it's also religion as well. So it says, um, act of dedicating, that's what devotion means, you may want to write this down. Um, Devotion is an act of dedicating something to a cause. Dedicated to loyal, committed to another through love and loyalty. Devout implies faithfulness. So the fact that we, we um, devote our time to God, that shows an act of faith. That's a faithfulness. Um, implies um, also loyalty, steadfastness in the face of any temptation. So that also helps against the temptations that we get, that we face, um, is because what we do is we turn to God when that when the temptation happens, or be even before the temptation happens, we, we're turning to God and say, Lord, I need your help. We're crying out, Lord, I need your help. Please, Lord, I need your help. Um, devotion stresses zeal and service amounting to self-dedication. So we need to be dedicated to the cause, dedicated to the cause. So God may not answer you the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, or even the tenth time, but continue. Continue. Spending time with God is critical for our walk. It will enable us to know how to walk in this time and more how to press into God um, and also how to hear from him. This is key. How you hear from God is being in his presence. That is how you hear from God. Speaking to God, knowing more about him, hungering after him, he's taught and he shows you who he is. That is how you hear from God. Then it says, um, also, um, do you think that we have too many distractions? It's just a question. I, this came to me. I don't know. I write down a lot of things. But in, I wrote this down and I said, are we bombarded by different things which take up too much of our time during the day? Are we actually spending the right time or spending enough time with God? And this is even, even for myself. Um, we need to consider what we do during our day. Are we putting God last? Are we putting him first? Or are we giving him enough time? Because that shows a sign of our devotion. As I go back to that word, devotion. Um, I wrote this down as well. 
so I don't know. I'm just going to read it out. It says here, pray, pray, and pray some more. Praise, praise, and praise some more. Thank, thank, and thank some more. Wait, wait, and wait some more. Come on. Hallelujah. Move, move, and move some more. Oh, yes. yes. Thank in advance for what is, was, and is to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Was, is, and is to come. Yes. How we use our time is important. The more we spend time with God is the more we will know him and be more fulfilled and we'll be in him. Yes. Prayer, study, meditate. Fast, Amen. Practical. These are practical aspects that God wants us to do. And this shows dedication. Yes. The more time we spend away from God is the less we know him. Yes. And the less fulfilled we will be. Hmm. Are we drifting further away from God? It's a question. By default, by not spending time with him. I want you to consider that. Jesus. Hey. First Thessalonians chapter three. Um, speaks about Timothy who was sent to strengthen the church. Um, it speaks about thanksgiving, prayer, and deliverance. Um, as mentioned, Paul was imprisoned. He was preaching the gospel boldly inside prison. Um, and it says boldly inside uh, was prayed as the gospel was being preached. Although at the time, there was mixed motives. So people were thinking at the time, Paul was in there, they were, they were, they were, preach, they were preaching, but they were also having mixed motives at the same time. But Paul was thankful because the gospel nonetheless was being preached no matter what the motive was, whether it was a good intention or they have other intentions, the gospel was being preached. And we have to think about it in this day and age. Um, when we want our deliverance, we need to continue steadfast, praying, um, despite where we are. I'm just using Paul as an example because he was in prison but still praying. So this is why I'm using this scripture. Um, he was still giving thanks. He was still praying and he expected his deliverance. See, you may be in that situation, in this bubble, where you're thinking, how long am I going to be in this bubble? But God knows that you're going to get out of it. And that's, this is the reason why um, it's, it's important, it's imperative to like, continue pressing on. Um, verse 20 so it's Philippians chapter 1, that was verse 1 to 19, if you wanted the scripture reference for that. Um, verse 20 says, whether it be by life or death, objective, which is the aim, is to magnify Jesus. Most important thing is that Jesus is glorified. Whether this means by living or dying to do so. A lot of people don't want to hear that because they want to die. It may come a time that, you know, you may lose your life for Christ. You know, and um, we're still to be in joy for that. You know, and, um, you know, it, it says, so Paul, at this time, he was saying that it's, you know, whether we live um, consistently serving God or die, it is all to gain, all gain. Um, so Paul found con um, content in this. So we need to find content. Um, in in um in 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 serving God, praising Him, um, doing what He asks us to do, and be contented. Um, we need to understand that our life is not our own, but it is Christ's. Whether we understand this or not, whatever happens, we should be in acceptance of the result of God's will. That is the most important thing. Jesus prayed the Father's will. He said, take this cup from me, Lord, if it be thy will. But he knew. The fact is, is that he had to, he had to come and he had to do what God said. Father in heaven said. 
So, um, trying over our faith, work with patience. This is James 1 to 3. We have to learn to be patient, waiting on God to answer our prayers and petitions, not being hasty. God wants to see how much faith and trust we have in him, even if it means that our breakthrough comes at the last minute. Amen. God will make a way of escape. Thank you, Jesus. I've got one more to tell you, and then I'm going to hand back. Um, so Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Your best is not necessarily God's best for you. Faith in God, by exercising your faith in God, you're able to receive the abundance that God has for you by having patience in waiting for, your, for the manifestation of the promise that he has for you. Isaiah 40, verse uh, 29 to 31 says, he giveth power to the faint, weak, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, oh yes, in their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, yes, and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So in this scripture of Isaiah, God is comforting his people. Yes. And a prophecy to bring his people back into relationship with him. Verse 41 says, Comfort ye, my people, saith your God. It speaks of the majesty of God and how he gives power to those, how he gives power to those that are weak. You know, at certain times I've felt weak in my body, I felt weak in my mind, in my you know, overall, you know, and um, if it wasn't for the grace of God, reading his words, you know, speaking, you know, sometimes it's even hard to even to pick it up. And, but, you know, I trust in God, I pray, you know, it's like, he, he knows, he knows what's going to happen, you know, before. And, um, but you don't. And he says also, so I'm going to go back to this. So it says, and also increases their strength. So just digress there. It speaks of a time when the youth shall faint and be weary and fall, but God will lift them up and renew their strength. They shall go, they shall be like eagles um, and having wings to soar and run and not faint. So um, I wanted to say that because we're in a time where there is a lot going on, where there's like the season of uncertainty. There's things going up bills going up um there's challenges where you know people are losing their house mortgage different things um and uh but what's certain is that god knows that we will get through it now uh, it goes back to that trial and that test that i said to you before amen uh, because all those things those things are for our, our learning and for our admonition so that we become strengthened mature yes. And learning how to deal with it and cope with it in testing times. Amen. Testing times are meant to come. God um, allows the testing time. He allows those things to happen so that you can endure. Hmm. They that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So we hmm. have to endure this. And this is the reason why um, I think even for myself, I gave my testimony um, recently about you know, me having my place. And, um, you know, I nearly lost my place, literally, um, because of financial reasons. But if it's not for the grace of God, standing on his word and his promise and asking him, Lord, please, you know, um, send help us. I think that, that it wouldn't have happened, you know. And I thank God that I could testify on this platform um, to the goodness, you know, and to his mercy. But he's, through this, through this study, he's helped me to identify and learn. And, and he showed me, he showed me um, that you're not on your own. 
even though I felt at times, I, I felt as though I was on my own, right? But um, no, every time he was like, he, he made a way of escape. He, he um, made someone else or something come about. And I was like, okay, Lord, so you're still here. You're still here, Lord. You're still in the building. And that's what I love about God. He said he would never leave you. And he said he would never forsake you. Amen. This is why God is amazing. This is why he's amazing. Because he's oh, nice yes. Yeah. And he says his word will not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish in what it shall, in what it should go forth to do. So yeah. this is the reason why. And um, I just thank God that, um, you know, um, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I mean, I, I, what I love about the Lord is that um, he's like, he, what he says is what he is. And, um, you know, and literally, we, we say a lot of things, but we sometimes we're not what we say we are. But God, um, he can't do that. You know, and um, that is what I love about God. You know, I love, I love the fact that he's merciful um, and that he continues to strengthen us every day um, through every, every testing trial. So I just want this word to encourage you um, on whatever you're going through at this time. Um, if you've done it for me, he can do it for you. And um, I thank God and I hand back to um, Pastor Grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you. Oh, wow, wow, wow. wow. All I can say is, wow, Mikael. Oh, wow. Oh, you gave us so much. You know, when you're talking from personal experience, testings and trials, tribulations, upheavals, you know, it's been through so much, you know, but to God be the glory, he is still standing by the grace of God. And uh, we thank God for this word. Oh my gosh, so much, so much you gave us is that all what we go through is for God wants to develop patience through all of this. I love where it says in uh, James, uh, this is a scripture that Mikhail said, count it all joy. You know, how many of us count it joy when we're going through? <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, um, we don't count it joy, do we? We like all moany and groany and grumpy. But James, it says, count it all joy. Um, my brothers and sisters, when you fall into various trials, and it's verse two says, be assured, you know, be assured that the testing of your faith, and it's, 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 uh, God doesn't, God, God said it's in the, in, in the Amplified, it says, it's, is given us experience, and this experience produces endurance there's something coming out of this test it's not just a test for no reason it's to it's to mature us. it's to produce endurance and lead into spiritual maturity and inner peace and uh that's what the word of god says and it says this is what endurance is and verse three verse four says and let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. So you can see there's a reason for the trials. There's a reason for the test. It's a reason that we go through what we go through because it's the working of our faith. It's the enduring of our faith. It's to develop spiritual maturity. You know, like when you go to the gym and you do your workout, it's to develop spiritual, physical muscles, to build those muscles, to make you stronger. And that's what happens when we get through the trial. It makes us stronger. Our trials are to make us stronger. And so, Mikhail, I'm thanking you so much. 
Yeah. And and we're gonna um we gonna when we got trials we're gonna remember this verse <laughs> that we should count it all joy, <laughs> count it all joy because not because of the trial, but because of the end result. Right. The end result is what is producing that refinery, like the gold that he's talking about. Once you go through that process, you're being matured. <laughs> matured like pure gold so think about the end product because god wants to get glory out of every situation it's not the trial that we rejoice about but we count it all joy for the that god is gonna make a way of escape for us and we're gonna come through it and we're gonna come through it stronger and uh, more more effective and i love the way how you broke down about um the word devotion as well that was really good you know devotion we have devotion every morning what is devotion devotion is a uh it's showing um uh um it's an act of a, a vow it's the act of a vow what we vow to spend the first time of our day with the lord it's um and, and michael said he said it's um it's that dedicate being dedicated to the cause. Um, it says when you're devoted to something, it shows faithfulness, and that's what we're that's what God is doing amongst us. He sh- he's seeing that He can trust us. We are faithful. You know, we are devoted to Him. We love Him. We trust Him. We 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 put our confidence in Him, and um. I just want to thank each of it and one of you that come on every morning. It shows your love for God. It shows your you that you trust God, and uh, and uh, continue to um to really allow God to uh, really meet you at the point of all your, your need. I just love the fact that um I just love the fact that we are being refined, and uh, and uh, He said again about praying. <laughs> What prayer does, it helps us to take our mind off worry. It takes our mind off the panic. It takes our mind off the anxiety. So we're not to be anxious for nothing. In other words, do not get anxious and panicked and, you know, uh, but just pray and pray with thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving to God. Pray and praise God that God is with you. And what was really blessing me is when you said that know who you're praying to (laughs) remember who you're praying to (laughs) you're praying to god and the god of the universe uh he cannot fail you he cannot fail you thank you michael such a blessing to have you and i just want to thank god for your life and thank god for all what he's taking you through this young man is only young he was only three years married and then his wife god um uh his wife um is no longer here so he's a, a he's a, a more, one of the youngest widows that I know. Widow is a widow. <laughs> God tell us remember the widows and the widow widows. Yeah. So I want you to remember him. He's a widow. That means he's lost his wife, and at such a young age. And uh, you know, when we think of a widow, we think of an elderly person. But he is a young man, and I want you to remember him. Remember him in your prayers. And uh, yeah, um, life hasn't been easy for him. You know, he, 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 was, he was devoted to Sharalan and God has not abandoned him. God hasn't forsaken him and he can testify of that, that for the mercies of God, he's still, he's still standing by the grace of God and uh, we give God glory. And uh, so <laughs> although you don't see him uh, often on the, on the platform, you'll be seeing a lot more of him because he's, yeah, he went through a, a, a dark, dark tunnel. Um, and uh, God is bringing, God is sh- 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 shining the light through at the other end to say that I, I'm, 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 I, I'm still here. Uh, and, uh, you know, no matter what we go through, you know, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Um, not even calamity, not even tragedy, not nothing can separate us from 
the love of God. God loves us in spite of whatever we go through. He is with us and he's there to strengthen us. So thank God. Mikel, have you got any um, prayer um, points that you want us to, to pray about? Because I know that a lot of us are going through, but, you know, we, we still need to be joyful. <laughs> we need to be joyful and thankful. And uh, um, Amen. Uh, I didn't really write down any prayer points, but um. But anything that springs to mind, we're just gonna pray now. Mm. What's the hardest thing to go through, Charles and Mikhail? What is the hardest thing to keep? What's the hardest thing when you're keep, going through that test? To keep your eye on God. To keep your eye on God, like it's the most difficult because you're both. If you keep your fo- if you put your focus on the on the trial itself, you take your eye off God. So we're gonna pray into that that we keep focus. Keep your eye, your mind set on the. Don't of- don't focus on the trial. Focus don't on focus the- on the problem. Keep your eye focus on God. Can you lead us in that prayer, Michael, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord, for such a time as this. We thank you, Father God, for, Lord, you have spoken by your word, Lord God, and your word is for our learning, for our admonition, Father God. I thank you, Father Lord, that you've allowed me to speak. You've allowed me to express, Lord God, your word by your spirit, Lord God. And Lord, no matter what the trial, no matter the temptation, no matter the test, Father, that we face on a daily basis, Lord, let us know that the trialing of our faith worketh patience. And Father God, you are refining us. You're in the business of refinement, Lord. You're refining us every day. Father, you are refining us every day. Let us, Lord, not take our eye off you. Let us not take our mind off you. But let our minds stay steadfast, immovable, unshakable, Lord God. Set on you, Lord God. Let our heart be set on you, our mind, our heart, our spirit. Let it be set on you, Father God, and not on the problem, not on the situation. But, Father God, let us trust in you with our whole heart and be not our understanding in all our ways to acknowledge you. And you said you will make straight our path. Father, we pray that you make straight our path, Lord God. Lord, we don't know what to do or when to do it, but we trust in you with our whole heart, oh God. And Father, I pray that you will renew our faith daily, renew my faith, renew each and every one's faith on this platform, and even those that are not on here, Father God. Those that come on, even those from around the world, Father God, just renew their faith. They're going, we're going through so many different challenges in this time, in this day and age. And um, Father God, let it not catch us at unawares, Father God. But Lord, give us the renewed strength. Give us the understanding, the wisdom, Father, to be able to discern, Father God, before the time. And also, God, help us, Father God, to make the right judgment. God, moving forward, Lord, we don't know what to do, oh God, and we need to in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, I pray, forgive us of any wrongs or any things that we have done to anybody, Father God. I pray, Father Lord, that you will give us that perfect peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, I pray that you will help us to be that light that shines in darkness, Father God, and that, that, that darkness does not know how to comprehend. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will give us an understanding heart, oh, Father, one that will get to know you, will spend time with you, devote our time with you, Father God. Um, uh, And also, God, that, Lord, we pray that we would dedicate, there will be dedication, Father God. Lord, rebirth, um, birth in us, Father, hunger, that zeal, that desire, Lord, to know you more, to understand you, Lord, and to and to want to serve you in spirit and in truth. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus 
that, Father, Lord, you will touch each and every one of us on this platform, Father, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. I pray in the name of Jesus, let every need be met on this platform, Father. Every need be met, whether it be, whether it be spiritually, emotionally, financially, physically. Oh, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, let it be done, Lord, right now. I speak it forth right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, help us to be expectant. Help us to be expectant, Father, that we may all have a testimony, Father, of overcoming that trial. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we may be endurance, endurance. Help us to endure, Father God. The race is not for the swift, but it's for they that endure to the end. Father God, I thank you for hearing this prayer, and I leave it with you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank, thank you, Mikhail. Glory to God. And um, while he was praying, you know, what was dropping into my spirit is that the Bible tells us to look out for the, the widows and the widows. How do we do that? You know, are we helping the widows and the widows? Widowers. Is it widow? With the male is the widows? The male is the widow. Uh, the That's widow. Right, yeah. Widower. Yeah. yeah. And the women is widow. The widow and the widowers. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've put out a request for help for Mikel. Only the, We've only had a few responses, very few. Very, very few, and you know, I don't normally do an appeal, but it that's what was just dropping into my spirit because you know, we ought to look after the widows and the widowers. That's what is, um, that's what it tells us in the word of God to remember them. And I just want to say that, um, we haven't had. Of, of, we haven't had that big response at all. So I just want you to um, to remember, Mikel, those of you that God touches your heart to help him financially, he's still desperate for your help. You know, the, the house that he's in, he and his wife, um, God pr provided that house for him. And it was so amazing what God did after they got the house, and my daughter put that house in order, then God took her out. He took her home. So God already made, made plans for him where he would live and put everything in place. And But it's, it's just for him to maintain that now. But yeah, he still needs help. So I'm appealing to anybody who wants to... Um, you know, really so into this, into his life, because he he really is um, still not out of the woods yet. God has been faithful to him. He's had his head in the sand for so long. And he's had his head under the blanket and he's been hiding away, you know, covering up, covering up, feeling sorry for himself. <clears throat> it hasn't been easy. You know, even, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's had a loss. Uh, he's been bereaved. He, he hasn't really had any counselling. You know, he's just had to trust God as his counsellor and um, tried to keep a roof over his head, still working, even though when he's, he can't even go to work. It's been tough because he can't work when he's, his mind is not um, focused. But God has been merciful. Um, so I just want us to uh, pray for Mikel. Yeah, he's prayed for us, but I want somebody to unmute and pray for him and ask for God to just continue to strengthen. He said he, he gives, he gives even the youth, it said in Isaiah 4, he read it, even the youth get, get weary. And, uh, but God, those that wait upon the Lord shall have their strength yeah. renewed. And uh, I just want somebody to unmute and pray for Mikhail that 
his strength will continue to be renewed and that God will make every financial provision for him, you know, in his time of loss. And uh, um, we thank God that he, um, God has sustained him to this point and not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, um, you know, God has sustained him. And um, we thank God he's merciful. As he said, he can, he can testify to the mercy of God. You know, because I'm sure the devil was just like Job. He said, oh, remove, remove Sherilyn and see if they don't all break down and they all quit and pack up. You know, the devil wanted myself and Chris to just break down and just quit and just give up on God. Wanted Mikhail to give up on God, but we're still standing. You know, we're still standing for the for the grace of God and, you know, and just know that God will, you know, when we go through our test, it, it shows what we're really made of. Are we made of, <laughs> what are we really made of? Are we just going to praise him when everything is going good? But what if it doesn't go the way we want it to go? I mean, if you told me that my daughter would be taken from me at 34, I would have said, no, she would live to an old age and I would have grandchildren. But she had, she didn't give me no grandchildren, and she didn't have one single child. She didn't she did she was taken um, um, taken away um, very abruptly, untimely. But God said enough is enough. And like um, the scripture that Mikhail read, um, God will not give us more than He we're able to bear. If you're going through it, you can bear it. Because God won't give you too much more than you're able to bear, but He will always Hallelujah. make a way of escape for you. And um, we thank God for Sherilyn's life, oh. and uh, we rejoice um, that she uh, was here and uh, that she's now resting in the presence of God in in His arms. And uh, you know, we got to keep going on, keep going on. You know, it, it, uh, you know, the, it's not. It's not for us to just um, fall at the first hurdle. You know, I've been watching the Olympics and I've been watching those hurdlers. They have to climb over one hurdle, run again, and then climb over another hurdle, then run again, and then climb over another hurdle. I'm thinking all these hurdles, so many hurdles in the way, but we every single one we've got to, uh, God has to bring us over. So we just thank God that, um, you know, for um, that, you know, there's, there's life is not, it's not, is, is life is not just smooth. It, there, there's trub, troubles and trials. There's tests and trials. But you know, God will take us over. Hallelujah. He will take us over every single hurdle and every single obstacle. So I want somebody to pray for. Um, pray for the who was that? For Daniel Sam. You're going to pray for him, Daniel? Yeah. Yes, thank you. I want to pray because, Lord Heavenly Father, you know the prayer, the righteous availeth much. And also where two or three are gathered, God is in our midst. So I thank you, Lord, for preparing, for preparing your son, Miguel, for preparing him for everything that he's had to be prepared for in his life. I thank you, Lord, for his future, which belongs to you. I thank yes, you, Lord, Lord. That Miguel belongs to you. I thank you, Lord, that he is living right in your, in your eyes and he is living for you, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for what you have given him in his life. I thank you, Lord, that you've given him peace. I thank you, Lord, that you have given him joy because the joy of the Lord is his strength. Without the joy of the Lord, he is nothing, Lord. So with the joy of the Lord, he is perfect in Christ. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to speak... Um, I believe that the Lord is telling me that uh, Psalms 23 is uh, was made for was made for Miguel, and I'm going to speak it into his vessel. I'm going to speak it into his uh, body, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. So I was going to say, prepare yourself. You'd be prepared from from the day you were in your mother's womb for this occasion to to receive the word of God, to receive the which is sharper than a two-edged sword. The Lord is your shepherd, Miguel. 
and the Lord is my, is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me he makes Miguel lie down in green pastures. He leads Miguel beside still waters. He restores Miguel's soul. He leads Miguel in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, the, yea, yea, though Miguel walks through the valley of the shadow of death, he will fear no evil. Hallelujah. For you are with Miguel. Your rod and your staff, they comfort him. Ah, you prepare a table before him in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of Miguel's enemies. You anoint his head with oil. The cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow Miguel all the days of his life. He shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. So thank you, my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing the prayer of the righteous. And I, I thank you, Lord, that other people are going to come into the atmosphere and pray. And the, the prayer that I just did it is the prayer that goes straight into your enzymes, straight into your adhesive molecules, straight into your brain cells, your mind, your body, and your soul, which belongs to Jesus Christ. Uh, until the day it's time for you to be taken back into the kingdom of heaven where you'll be back with your wife and all the angels of the Lord Jesus Christ and dancing and, and praising the Lord saying holy 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 Lord God almighty who was and is and is right now to come we thank you Lord Jesus and I'm going to pass it on I'm going to pass the back on to whoever's going to be praying right now in Jesus yeah. name Right I'm now. just going to come through that prayer. Amen. Thank you, Daniel, for that. Um, bless the Lord. We continue to pray for, I pray with our brother, Mikhail. Hallelujah. Um, we bless God for his righteousness upon our brother. And as he said in his word, pray, pray, and pray some more. Praise, praise, and even praise some more. Such a timely word. Um, even to the prayer that I pray this morning for the Lord to hear, to content, to help us to maintain and hear you come delivering a word such as this. Blessed be the name of the Lord for his confirmation. And even so to say as well, uh, I'll be, I'll be sharing tomorrow and guess what? It's from the, <laughs> it's from the James as well and around a similar topic. And we've thanked God for his confirmation. This is why I'm blessing God even more. And I love the fact that you say pray, pray, and pray some more because the prayer of a righteous man, like we've heard, our brother Daniel says, avail it much, um, a consistent prayer. So, Father, we truly thank you this morning, and we heap up our praise and our prayer unto you. And we heard the words of our brother this morning that you have uttered into his life to be spoken over ours. The Father, as he speaks about James, Father, Lord, of the word that yet come forward in times of trials, hallelujah, that we gain patience through all these trials. We not only gain patience, but you are, your love is made perfect in our, in our weaknesses, as Paul has said. But we thank you, Father, Lord, for our brother Mikhail, because even though he is going through what the world would deem one of the worst things we could ever go through, but at the same time, he's still here. You have kept him, you have caused him, oh Father, to maintain his walk, to, as we've heard his prayer point, to keep his eyes focused on you. He said, Lord, it is difficult. It is troublesome. It is. Yes, it is difficult, Father Lord, for him to maintain his eyes and his mind focused on you, but he has and he's still here because you've chosen him to be. And you're giving him a strength like no other. And you are helping him to maintain in that area. And as we heard our brother Daniel has ministered a prayer, knowing that the joy of the Lord is his strength. And you have renewed the joy of his salvation to this point where he's still here. And we thank you, Father Lord, and we know that you are preparing. Everything he needs, you've already prepared. Regardless of if that is financial, regardless of that, oh, Father Lord, is the physical or if it's the spiritual, you have already provided. You've already maintained. But I pray, Father Lord, that yet as he seeks, as he cries out, as he prays, and prays some more, as his word says, that yet he will find. For I know, Father Lord Jesus, as yet as he calls unto you, he will, you will surely answer him. 
for you are his father. You are his God. He calls out to you, as he said about devotion, that he devotes himself over to you, his life over to you, praising you and worshiping you, knowing that through his storms, through the pressure of life, he is still here. And we thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercies, as we've heard, that is running after him, that is following after him, that's chasing him down, that is keeping him to this point that will lift him up through his situation and put him in a place of Father Lord better than he was yet before. Because you know the outcome, Father Lord. For greater is the end of a thing, as your word would say, than the beginning of it. But we know, Father Lord Jesus, they're real. There will be that time where you, have, Father, cause the, the flower to come out of the ashes. Hallelujah. That you will rise him up out of this pathway as he is now, as he shares and brings hope, bring joy, hallelujah, to others on this platform to hear that even through trials, yet we, you, Father Lord, has allowed us a light to still shine. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God you are, Father Lord, to give us such hope in the time when there is no, where there is no joy, you give us hope. Yes. You put a smile on our face, Father Lord, in the most difficult times. But we praise you for our brother, that Father, whom yet you have strengthened, whom yet you have given a cause to be here this morning to give a word, and a sound word, a word that comes just in time, a word that comes in season, a word that is on point, a word that brings confirmation, a word that comforts, a word, oh Father Lord, that have that much abundance of life. We thank you, Father Lord, for his life. And I pray as you pour out into him, he will pour out in someone else around him who yet may be going through similar or even worse. But Father, we thank you that you help him to maintain that yet as you pour the oil in his heart and his life, that his cup runneth over as we've heard, that surely goodness and mercy will continue to be heaped upon him all the days of his life. And as he dwells, he keeps his eyes focused, keep his mind focused, we pray for his mind, Lord. We pray that his mind will be stable and set on you. His visions, his eyes will be focused on you. Father, we pray for his mind. That everything, everything that yet strikes up against his mind, Father, in the name of Jesus, we cast it out, Lord. Every thought that is not of you, we cast it out, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Free his mind, Lord. Hallelujah. As we heard, put on the helmet of salvation. Let it be so upon him, Lord, that his mind has been renewed daily in you as he fixes his eyes upon you and gazes his, his eyes upon you and lift his eyes to the heavens. For where cometh his strength? His strength cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father, thank you, Lord, for his strength that he has overcome and is overcoming. And as he prays and prays and prays some more, hallelujah, we know that, Lord, the windows of heaven, as we, we have heard in your word, Father Lord, that when the praises go up, the blessings, the windows of heaven will come down. So, Father Lord, we thank you for opening the windows of heaven and pouring out a blessing upon his life. Right now, Father Lord, we pray as we receive it over our brother, as we pray with him, Lord Jesus, and for him in order for him to maintain until that day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's be the name of the Lord forever. May his name be glorified forever. Amen. 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 Uh, oh, thank you, Daniel. Thank amen. you, Junior. Uh, I know that, um, I know Mikel has been strengthened by that prayer. Mm. He needs it so very much. And uh, thank you so much for, for praying for him. Um, I'm going to go to um, Heather. Heather. Hi, morning. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Morning. Um, just say thanks, Mikel, for... Um, I haven't seen you for a long time, but we understand. And it's really nice uh, to see you come back on. Uh, I mean, Daniel is prayed and Junior is prayed. Um, okay, 
the third one. <laughs> the there's a scripture uh, that uh, came to me yesterday. Actually, the, I, I don't remember the um, scripture. I think it's Deuteronomy, something like that. Um, wasn't gonna go there, but um, um, it says a twofold cord. Um, no, no, no. That's not what it says. It says a threefold cord cannot easily be broken. And where two of us are gathered together in his midst, um, then God presents himself in, in our midst as the third person. Uh, so um, there's strength in unity, there's strength in us coming together, there's strength in us praying. Um, and God is uh, in the midst uh, of, of what we're doing. And um, I'm praying and I'm talking at the same time. So just to thank God for your life, Mikael, we know that um, as I was listening to a, a speaker the other day and he expressed that there are times we go through what is called uh, our night seasons. And there are times when we go through our day season, the day the sun comes up, the light is on, bam, the spotlight is on you. Um, you don't have time to check, oh, should, did I polish my shoes? Did I put on the right color socks? Because the, the light is on you. And when you're going through your night season, nobody, uh, nobody hears your name. Nobody hears you crying. Nobody, it's almost like nobody understands what you're going through or could even empathize or feel the pain of what you're experiencing. But um, just know that God is always with you, even during the night season. And the enemy, yes, he's got his, you know, tools and his, uh, his workers and his tricks and everything, but he has never been able to stop the night from coming or the day from breaking. He's never been able to control the elements in that respect. And which makes you see that he's, he's powerless. God is, and if God almighty who controls the night and the day is with you, then you don't need anything else than having God on your side. And there's scriptures that, that talks about God's mighty hand even through your night season, his hand is outstretched and his love endure it forever. His love is with you. But you will, when, you, when, the, when the light comes on, you will say, oh God. Sometimes you say, there's a, we say it's, it was good for us to be afflicted or you know, because of um, what God has done through our trials, our temptation, everything that we've gone through, you know, he, he is with us. So uh, be comforted. And if there's anything that you have need of uh, emotionally, financially, spiritually, all the resources are in God. He lacks nothing. And we, we, we just agree and pray that all the people who are supposed to be your destiny helpers, that they will locate you, you know, that they will find you. You don't have to, like a friend of mine the other day, she needed some money, like urgently, because uh, she, she invested in a property in Jamaica and she just did it by faith, paid the first bit. And uh, when the time came around for her to do the other installment, she just used part of the funding she got through the pandemic. And she said, you know what, I'm gonna invest in property. And now the time came around for her to pay the other installment. She, she didn't have the money. And she was speaking to me and saying, you know, who, who can I ask, who can I ask for a loan? You know, because the property once it's rented, it can make the money back in a short space of time. And I, I said to her, just pray about it. Pray about it. There is God. It, the resources are there. God is not broke. 
He's got the money. Just pray about it. And ask the Lord who you should go to. Or he's going to put some someone, put uh, you on that person's mind. And that person's going to call you. Just ask him to maybe, what, two people, three people save you. Call in Tom, Dick, Harry, Sue, and Paul. You know, and before you know it, you've exhausted yourself. Ask over five, seven people and none of them can help you. So ask and pray and ask God, who should I go to? And she called me back within, <laughs> within about three days. Oh my God, the Lord put this person on my mind. And just like that, she got 10,000 pounds wired to her account. She rang someone else. She didn't ask the person for any money. They were just talking and sharing. And she said, you know that you've been on my mind and I was thinking of calling you. And the person transferred a hundred pounds into her account. And she said, that's not all. I've got some more to give you, but when I get paid. And she was able to get the funds that she need at the time that she needed it to pay the other bit of uh, money that she needed to secure the, the sale of uh, the property that she was investing in. So just look like with her and so many other testimonies that we've had, um, we pray that people who are designed to be in your life for a particular time for for a particular season even for this season that you're going through right now there is still resources available god is not short of his promises and he's he, he, he there's no lack in god and you are his servant and his hand is upon your life is 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 grace is upon your life so we pray that whatever you need if it means that somebody's gonna think about you this week and say, I need to call Mikel, I need whatever. It doesn't have to be money all the time. Sometimes it's just somebody to talk to, to share, to, you know, to have that uh, strengthen you in, in faith. But whatever the resources that you need, I pray that there is always more and that you will have so much that you yourself will be thinking, okay, it's too much. I need to bless somebody, you know? So we pray that that will be your portion, Mikkel, that you will experience no lack, no want, and that God, as God continue to take you through the season, that healing and wholesomeness will be your portion, that he will restore you, restore your mind, restore your heart, restore your faith again. It was really good, good of you to come on and even through your adversity, still have a praise on your lips. And we thank God for your life. And we thank God. It's, it's, it takes time uh, to heal and, to, to, and for anyone to have experienced what you have experienced and to recover from it. So you, you cannot recover from this like in one day. But through God's grace and his strength and his supernatural power, you can be wholesome and you can recover. And nothing is wasted nothing is lost the lord will allow you to recover all not some not part not in bits it's not scattered god will allow you to recover all that you you have lost and he will even put more on top of it so we thank god for your life and we thank god for even pastor grace because it's not just a loss for michael as well it was a loss for, for, for pastor grace and family and we we thank god for for your life as well and even through the adversities and the, 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 the nights and the tears that nobody knows about but God. We ask God to restore and mm. to replenish as well and to place upon you more, more than what you even expected. You know, there is abundance of grace available for all of us. And we pray that the healing that the healing will be so supernatural that you're probably even wondering what the pain really felt like. It will be so quick. It will be so, um, as you were mentioning about that, that uh, program that come on with uh, Supernatural, that's the, the time and the age that we're in right now as, as believers. And God is calling us to walk in that space, in that realm, to, to step out of the norm that of what we're used to and to to come up higher because you know having a conversation yesterday and 
uh, someone was sharing about the young people going to university that um, even the, the young men, they're even scared of uh, uh, the women in, in university or the girls, they have no desire where that is concerned because there's so much rich craft that's arrived in even in universities now that they're posting it, they have like a blog or something that they post about spells that they cast on people, um, spells to let them not perform well in school and stuff like that. They're, they're, they're coming out of the, the woodworks and they're bold with it. So if the enemy is coming out and being bold like that, we have to go up to another level mm -hmm. as, as saints. We can't stay the same place where we are because these things should be nothing for us to speak the word of God because the word of God will not change. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to speak the word of God into these situation and we're gonna see the manifestation of God's power through our, our tongue as well. Um, there was a scripture that spoke about Elijah. He, he was a normal person just like me and you. And he had his flaws. But yet still he spoke and he said that it shall not rain. And for three years, God honored the word that came out of his mouth because he's his servant. It didn't rain for three years. And when he spoke again to say the, the heavens will open, the heavens open up. So we are no less than what he was able to do in his time that we are able to do in our time, just through uttering out of our mouth. So take it not for granted, even the prize that we've prayed this morning or we're coming on and speaking this morning, we're causing so much damage in mm. the enemy's kingdom or in the atmosphere. We're causing so much damage. Sometimes we're not able to see straight away, but the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. Some of it we will see changes in the news, changes what's happening changes around us if we just open our eyes and look stuff is happening because something has to happen when we pray because we are God's servants and he's put that uh power in, in our tongue in our mouth and we, we're not just praying because we can and we're not just praying because we can quote the scriptures but once we open our mouth the spirit of God the Holy Spirit dwells within us once we open our mouth and declare it into the atmosphere the word of the Lord over a situation. The Holy Spirit moves on our behalf. So we, are, we ask you, Lord, also just to open our eyes to see the amount of angels that are around us this morning. They are, there are so many of them that encamp it around us right now, just waiting to take the words and to start moving on our be, be, be behalf. Just help us to see, Lord God, that there are more for us than against us. And as we go through the different periods and seasons in our walk, help us to be confident that you are with us, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, that Mikkel is going to see some great manifestations, even maybe possible from today. He's going to see some great manifestation of things he's asked for, things he's prayed for, or things he's not even formalized into words. Lord God, let his confounded Lord God let him be surprised oh my God I didn't even think of this but Lord you did you know and for anyone else on the platform who needs anything Lord God who has any desires unspoken we ask Lord God that you move on our behalf this morning and you whatever request that is in our heart the desires of our heart Lord God that you will move ahead of us and let it be done according to your will we thank you for this time and this dispensation that we're in, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are still here because there is more. There is more expected out of our life. You're not done with us. There's more that you want us to do and help us to walk in your will and your purpose, Lord God, and help us to increase in not just the word in our lives, Lord God, to, but to come up higher, to come to another level, to come to another place at the table that you're inviting us to come to Lord God so we thank you Lord God we pray that everyone on here there be no lack no worry no want no need but we understand Lord God we are going to go through some dark seasons 
but there will come a breaking of the day. The day will break, it has to, because you have commanded it to be so. The season is just for a while. And there's a time when the light will shine on us again, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, that if us, if we're in a dark season right now, that it will not be wasted, that we can still invest in what you have given us. We can prepare ourselves, Lord God. So when the, 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 the light has come upon us and it's time for us to shine in whatever you have called us to do, Lord God, we are, we are ready. We don't have time, as I said, to run and polish the shoes or realize that the lace is undone.